There we go. I'm not, no, hi, there we are. So I'm not sure why we weren't live. But I think we are now. It said we had a poor connection. So apologies for that. Maybe it's the rain outside. Um, I still haven't seen anybody come on and say hi. So I'm hoping we're live. Hi, Crystal. There we are. Now we're live. Okay. Heather's watching. Great. We are live. Okay. So hi, Meg. Today we are going to, uh, this one goes out to Margot Rosen, who has, has been asking me since the beginning. Um, if we could tackle something that has wax on it. So I have old paintings here and I posted them today, just before, of two that I, I pulled out of my pile of sample boards and things that have a lot of interesting parts, but they just have zero composition. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna see, maybe some stuff will stay, maybe some stuff will go. There are things that um, I would be tempted to hold on to but I'm just gonna have to say you know what why and let's just leave it as um, as fate would have it and some stuff will stay and some stuff will have to go hi Maria okay so I'm gonna turn the camera on to hi Margo there she is all right so I have a brand new tripod not right now but set up for tomorrow's class. So let's hope that it's a little bit better than what we've got going on right now. Maybe I need to bring it a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Um, tomorrow I'll spend the morning getting us set up so that you guys have the absolute best view possible. If you saw this crazy little rig I've got going on here, you'd laugh. Okay. What I really want to talk to you about, though, more than anything in these is, um, and I'll just keep holding them up, is how do you approach a, a painting that has wax and you want to fix it, okay? So what tends to happen um, is that, I'm going to see if I can still read. Yes, I can still read. So um, I'll be able to check in on questions while, whoops while we're doing this but what i want to the reason i pulled out these two was to show you that um i'm okay with letting anything go in these because i have a lot of great things going on don't get me wrong and i have a lot of interesting parts but it's just not working because if you refer back to that composition sheet that i gave you guys um i'll see if i can find mine oh it's right here look at that how convenient um, if I look at any of these um, areas of composition, these are really like you could you can pick out all the things wrong with these just by looking at this, right? So are my objects overlapping? Kind of, sort of. They've all been sort of buried. Um, are they just touching? Are they all isolated like those little islands I always talk about? Um, is it in good position? Is it cropped? Right now I have everything kind of looking like a bit like islands, some things overlap, but what we're really lacking in either of these um, backgrounds is there's lots, like I said, there's lots of great stuff going on, but what's really lacking in both of these is any sort of a um, focal point. There's absolutely no focal point in either of these um, paintings. So I'm going to do two approaches and I'm going to do them relatively quickly as I'm, as I'm walking through this um, so that, because not, it doesn't apply to everybody who's not able to do encaustic, but if I were to put them the right way, it would be the way that I had initially intended them. But if I look on the back, I haven't put any wires or anything. So basically I can do whatever I want in terms of um, my sizing and all that stuff. So the first approach I'm going to start with is chalk paint. So for any purist and caustic artists out there, you're going to cringe right now because you're going to watch um, this and say, you can't do that. Um, I'm going to. So whether I can or can't, this is what's happening. And I'm going to start with some chalk paint. 
So again, chalk paint isn't going to fuse into my, into, or, or uh, sorry, it's not going to fuse into my wax. So it's just going to sit on top. I'm just mixing um, a paint here. There we go. So I have like this, this blue color and I think maybe I'd like to see, I like this pink and I like this pink and I like some of these words and things. So I'm going to turn this and I'm just going to show you one approach where I'm just going to put some chalk paint on top and I can cover up the whole thing or I can leave some spots bare. I've got a lot of texture on here so there's some areas that are not getting the chalk paint. I'm going to pretty much start with a full surface. This is a 12 by 12 board and I'm just there was no composition so whatever comes out comes out. I'm really not um, in any sort of uh, place of attachment to what I've already done but I'm using my back layers and you guys will hear me say this in every single painting I do I never consider a back layer or any of my layers to be um, to be inconsequential to the whole look because all that great stuff going on in the background I am now open to possibilities okay so let's just leave it at that for now while it dries and look at that I just pulled that acrylic thing off my off my palette a little skin but anyway I'll save that for later I got a little distracted there with a little ooh shiny okay so I'm going to let this dry while I work on the other one so here's the other one we'll put this one aside Okay, sorry, was there a question? So I'm not, I'm not, um, I just want to show two different approaches, okay? So let's just start with the chalk paint on that one and then any questions that I miss, I may have to get back to afterwards. Um, but again, not married to any of the composition here. Um, so I have to decide what it is I want to do. I want to do an image transfer or a collage so maybe I'll show you how to collage because that is one thing that comes up often is how do you collage on top of wax um, so we talked yesterday a little bit about um, the ability to just collage using wax and I'm always a little fearful of that if that's a great word um, to use only because it's just a bin of collage I'm going to go through till I find something that looks good. Um, I'm always fearful of just starting with... Is that a good way of putting it? Yeah, okay. So fearful is a good way of putting it because I'm always fearful of putting down paper that is going to be too big or... Um, well, maybe we'll get into the specifics of it later but too, too much for the glue to handle. I guess that's the best way of putting it. So I'm gonna use this mid-weight paper. Um, I like the back side, but I wanted to show you what happens when you apply. It's funny, because that, that piece actually is already in there. Um, so maybe we'll keep some of that and we'll turn it this way. That's probably a better idea. But the size of the paper or the collage paper that you're going to add is definitely on top of the wax is definitely going to play a big role in whether or not we um, we have to glue it down so if it's just a little piece then you could just collage it in with wax but i would say to be on the safe side let's use let's use some glue okay so again, it's not a, a purist technique. Oh, that's a very, very poor straight cut. I'm gonna create a horizon on this one because it'll be faster and it'll be the opposite of this one, which will be a lot more um, abstract. So, there we go. So I'll save that little piece in case it's of any consequence later, but 
if I were to just collage this piece in with wax, what would happen is over time, because it's wax underneath and wax on top, there's nothing actually binding those two things together. There's nothing actually binding those two things together. So what we need to be a little more cautious of is the fact that this paper over time will lift if I just have wax and wax. So I will always just put a thin layer of glue on the back and it's not going to hold all that um, permanently except it will hold it in there flat enough so that we can hopefully avoid air bubbles. So I'm just putting in wallpaper paste to hold it in place. So if you have Yes Paste, um, that would be an ideal glue or an, an ideal adhesive to use at that point. But because a lot of people, um, well, maybe don't have access to that right now or ordering it or whatever, I'm just going to use wallpaper paste as I always do. So there is moisture in here right now. So because there's moisture in here, I can't put wax on top of it directly because what's going to happen at this point is if I put my wax here, it's going to trap in it like I'm sealing. Um, picture this, I'm, picture, I, I'm sealing the, the wax, the glue, the paper, and then more wax on top. But if that glue is wet, then I'm also trapping in the potential for mold. Okay, so I need that to dry up. So I think maybe what I'm going to do in order to speed this all up is plug in my, oh, actually, you know what? I'll just use my, oh no, I can't use my heat gun. I was going to use my heat gun, but that's only good on wax. Um, if I use it on the paper, I'm just going to burn the paper. So I want to dry that up a little bit. So I'm going to grab my heat gun, dry this up. Pardon the noise for a moment. Because this paper is printed on the back side, you're going to see when I put wax on it, it's going to come through. Um, if it's too much, then I'll have to deal with that, but I think it may be nice. Um, oh yeah, maybe I'll just speed up the drying of the chalk paint ones so that we can work on both at the same time. So this is two different approaches, right, to changing or, um, or fixing or finishing an encaustic painting. So what we have to do is the, the painting has essentially been waterproofed, right, because it's had wax applied to it. So what we need to do is we need to observe different um, sandwich layers. I guess it's going to be the best way to describe it for a lot of people is that you've already sealed it. So basically you're not removing. Um, a lot of people always tend to, when they're fixing their encaustics, they tend to just scrape, 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 heat up, scrape. I don't do that at all. I actually use every layer that was underneath as beneficial because it's created all this stuff that when you'll see on this one in particular, when I scrape through that, you're going to see that there's so much there that if it wasn't there, it would be totally boring painting. So this one, the other approach I'm going to take to this one is up here, I'm going to put the clear wax, but right now I'm going to tone this one down by just putting a layer of a creamy white wax on top. So underneath here, I've got kinds of all kinds of collage and color and everything else. And I'm going to make this one a bit more um, monochromatic, but at the same time, not, not um, completely getting rid of everything that was underneath. But this one, I'm going to tone down a lot more than this one. 
if you guys are just tuning in now, remember that the first thing you want to look at when you're looking at any painting that you're going to tackle, right, which is our theme for the week, is any painting that you're going to reevaluate, reassess, rework on, whatever, is first start looking at the composition. And so I looked at these and I said there's absolutely no focal point. There's no, um, there's nothing really for me to look at. Right? It was all just a matter of these floating um, elements, which some were pretty, but it didn't make a painting. It just made lots of pretty little, little things. So almost like a background, right? So we had a nice little background going, but that's, that's not a painting going to make. So I'm going to tone this thing down with encaustic wax, whereas this one I have toned down with chalk paint and I know you guys can't see this but or maybe you can but if I fuse the chalk paint and heat it up all it's doing is blistering the chalk paint because that layer of the sandwich is just like bubbling up but the wax itself won't ever grab on and hold on to the chalk paint but the chalk paint is enough to be just like sitting in there like a layer of lettuce in our sandwich so we haven't removed the bottom bread. We haven't removed our cheese and our tomatoes and all that stuff. We've just lifted the top layer. In this case, we haven't lifted anything, but we've added another layer. Actually, this is what we're making. We're making a triple decker sandwich. So we're not removing anything. We're just adding now some lettuce on top. And this one, we're actually gonna change the wax a little bit. I'm, this one's still cold. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out. All right, so I'm going to get a bit of clear wax on this one. This is just a sample board, so if it's not entirely perfect, that's okay. All right, so now I've got my wax on there. Now I'm going to fuse it. So you see the printing on the back side is coming through. That is the, I don't know, the beauty or the deterrent, I guess the way, whichever way you want to look at it, of having double printed, did, uh, double printed papers is that the back side generally shows up through it. And in this case, I didn't mind it, but for putting an image up here, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, actually, I just had an idea. Why don't I turn it? There, that gave me a great idea. So I could turn it and that way I can still keep some of that because I think that part's actually kind of interesting. And maybe I might find an image a little easier that works with that. So I just cleaned off a blade and then I'm also gonna need some carving tools. This one is now dry, so maybe I'll move this one over. This one needs to cool down a little bit. My tool just came apart. Okay. All right, so. There we go. Does the wax need to be smooth to add a collage? Um, a piece of paper that big, yes. Um, however, if you're adding it with glue, then probably not, because you could make it conform to the shape, but you just don't want to have any holes. If you have a hole, then that's going to be an error pocket for sure. Um, mine isn't entirely smooth, but I use glue, so I should be safe. There we go. Okay, so let's try to um, put some shape into this. And because I can't see what's going on underneath, I'm actually okay with creating just some lines. So this is like my scratch marks that I normally make. So I'm just creating some line. Take that off.
So like I said, this one's going to be a lot more abstract, but I'm using the wax or the chalk paint to somewhat create a, um, a composition for me. So when I scratch that, that black and white came through, the red came through. So those bits are exciting to me. I like those a lot. So I'm just scratching it off, seeing what happens. Okay. Some more scratch lines. Okay, so we're creating an interesting composition. All right, so this one's pretty good. So now I can also add, um, let me see if I can get a graphite crayon or something, because I want to show you that you can still draw on top of this. So let me get that and put that down. Okay, so I just pulled out a few Neo colors. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Neo colors, they are a water soluble crayon um, made by Karen Dash from Switzerland. And with these, we can draw right on top, we can add some scribbling, we can add some more lines. Actually, that looks really nice on that blue. There we go, a little bit of paper peeling, so I'll peel that back a little more. I can also use my scraper tool. Or pottery scraping tools and get down to some of the more interesting things that were below. There's some hot pink coming through, that's really fun. Okay, so this one's got an interesting an interesting um, like a lot of lines for me to follow, if you see what I mean. So this one is, is like purely intuitive in that I'm just scraping and I'm seeing what's coming out. But the parts that I'm, I'm seeing that I like, like I said, if I had scraped off all this wax, then it would not be nearly as exciting as what's coming out of this now. So that's why I always caution you about your, about, um, scraping off all your paintings, your encaustic paintings, and starting fresh. The, or, or trying to save one little area. I mean, just let it go, right? So this is already a thousand times more exciting than what I had going on before. So um, now I'm going to try and pick up on some of this, this uh, painting. So. I'm using, I've got my heated uh, color palette over here, and I'm just gonna start adding, that's a gross color, I'm not gonna use that again. I'm gonna add, this is colored wax. So I could just go ahead and put clear wax on here, but what I'm really more interested in right now is picking up on some of the colors that I already have going through here and some of the scratch marks, I'm going to use them as my compositional lines. So because this one is going to have a much more abstract feel to it, I'm just going to lay down some color in very random but complementary ways. Some of the chalk paint I may end up leaving, but I can also seal it in clear wax if I want it to be the same sheen but already way more exciting. This was one area where I'd scratched off already, so I'm just gonna add a bit more color up here. Of 
Okay, and then I also want to add some more collage at some point. So, um, all right, now how I'm going to mix in some of those colors. Oh, I don't have a pink on my palette. I was hoping for a bit of pink, but I don't have any. So let me just put in a bit of red and a bit of purple and see what we come up with. Okay, not my favorite color in the world, but that's okay. I'm just going to add a bit of the same blue on top. wax isn't melted yet and it's got this gorgeous paste like quality to it which I'm loving okay so I'm now going to start to fuse some of this together and let's see if I have enough color on here So now I'm just kind of sandwiching and layering because I really want these colors to come out. And don't forget, I got a lot of wax underneath. Got that chalk paint sitting on top. So when I fuse, it's going to be a real interesting smorgasbord of colors. See what happens. This is one of my garbage waxes. So you'll see lots of bits and pieces come out of that one. My garbage wax is just sometimes when I'm using my razor blade and I'm scraping off, I throw everything in one container. Okay, now you'll notice that if I want to use any black or anything, I'm not doing it at this point. And, and my rationale behind that is that the black is actually when I start to blend, you're going to see here in a minute, but the black is actually going to be a little too overpowering for what it is I'm trying to accomplish at this point. So I can add black later, but I, I usually don't start with, with um, black at this stage of any of my paintings. Okay, so I think I have enough here that I'm ready to start fusing. So where I have raw chalk paint, bare chalk paint, I'm not going to add anything. But now I'm just going to overfuse a little bit, meaning I'm going to make them into a puddle if I want. If I like the effect, I'm just going to leave them. But I like to make my waxes kind of blend together, just like what people do now with um, acrylic. They do the pores. So I like the waxes to blend together and do that swirly pour thing. And then I just play with color and see what happens. I love that scrape back part. I try not to get too attached to it. Oh, you know what? I have a smoldering piece of paper towel. So let me just put that out. Careful with paper towels near your paintings. Spray that one with a bit of water. So I think that one's pretty good for what I want to demo next. So you can see that I've done kind of the same thing. I've gone back to the same place of having no composition, right? So this is where I got some water on here. I'm just going to have to pick up the water from when I put out that flame. There we go. Okay. So now I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to scrape through some of those colors and some of that wax. And now you can see I'm getting a bit more interesting stuff happening. So this is a bit more detailed. So this is the stuff that I make scrapings out of. 
So I'm not as concerned, obviously, about following the lines that I had before. I've just added some, some new color on top and now I'm creating that composition. So in a much more abstract way. But you can clearly see that if I didn't have all that paint underneath, all that encaustic wax underneath, that this drawing wouldn't nearly be, or this painting wouldn't be nearly as much fun because I'd have nothing to scrape back to. So for those of you who like to create a bit of raw, grungy feel in your art, Linda Foley, um, this is definitely one way to achieve it, is just to absolutely play with your previous layers and your scratching and your carving back and letting loose and building up. It's really fun, it's really rewarding, and it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like archaeology, it's like discovering something. So that is super fun and exciting. And this is one of these paintings where I could tend to just get lost and forget I'm talking to you guys. Um, because it is that exciting because I'm just like I'm carving out I'm seeing what's underneath those little bits of paper that will pop through or a little bit of text like in this case here I don't know if you guys can see that but there's a little bit of text popping through that to me is so exciting I just want to keep painting I just want to keep layering I just want to keep working but at the same time I want to show you the other approach, so I'm just going to leave that one aside. If we have time, we'll get back to it. But this is, oh, I wanted to show you adding in collage at this point. So one more thing I wanted to add here. So thin collage is, your best bet at this point is um, like thin fabrics work really well, um, or tissue paper or napkins. So napkins would probably be my my first go-to I'll see if I can find a napkin or a piece of tissue that would work in here okay so let's let's see how this little fox works in here so I'm gonna put him in maybe in this spot and then the fox is surrounded by trees so I'm going to remove some of this paper because it's in my chalk paint area. And if it's in my chalk paint area, it's not gonna show up. I'm just gonna pull that out. Leave some of those trees, it's pretty abstract. And then what I'll do is I'll add them into, and I'm just pushing it down into the wax for now, trying to get out any wrinkles. <laughs> But you guys can see how beautifully the tissue paper goes in at this point. Or napkin, sorry. As long as the napkins are put down to their first layer. Remember, napkins are always triple ply, whether you believe me or not. Um, the first ply comes off super easily. So that's how you know that you've got the, the first layer off. The second layer is not as easy. So there, I've collaged that in. Now I'm gonna take a bit of clear wax And I'm going to coat him well because I'm using a torch and not a heat gun. If you guys are using a heat gun, it's fine. Um, but the torch will catch tissue paper on fire or napkins on fire in a split second. So I'm just making sure I've done my due diligence here of making sure that I don't have a second fire in the studio. Today, one fire a day is probably enough okay so I'm gonna get rid of all my papers because that's how you end up with studio fires and I'm gonna fuse this in so napkins and tissue you want to keep fusing them until they go absolutely transparent 
and then I generally don't scrape because um, the tissue papers are so fine. So I'll go back in and I'll add more wax if it doesn't look fully integrated. Meaning like, you know on napkins you can see that perforation marks and stuff like that. Another fire. So if you can still see the perforation marks, like the bottom of this napkin, I'll show you how I'll deal with that. But you can see I'm building a composition. I'm building something much more interesting and something I can respond to much better than what I had going on before. If I wanted to at any point, like let's say I went, oh, I shouldn't have taken off so much blue over here. I can go back in with my chalk paint and I can layer that back in and let it dry. It's already dry on my palette, so it's definitely going to dry at some point. Okay, so this little bit I wanted to take care of. So um, there's no image to scrape off down here, so I'm not as concerned that I'm going to get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is the corner of my napkin is really showing here, like it looks really straight. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to scrape out the bottom of it with my blade and incorporate it, push it right down so I can't see the edge. Remember I told you the key to good mixed media is that no one can see your seams. People will, will ask you, how did you do that? Right? So that is what we're always striving for whenever we're working in any type of mixed media situation is that people can't see your layers. They can't see your process. So in this one, now I'm going to put a bit of wax on top. To incorporate those edges. Okay, so like I said, I could get lost in this painting. There's a lot of fun stuff happening when you start scraping and but I'm not going to do all that today. Right now we're just going to fuse that one up and if we have time to come back to it, we will. But I'm going to fuse that lightly and then again to incorporate I'm just going to scrape and because I've got that stuff underneath everything looks purposeful nothing looks um, out of place nothing looks like I just went back in and added a piece of collage my seams are dare I say flawless I hear you laughing, Heather. I know. And Amelia. There's sometimes there's some things that I say that I feel like my brain is just wandering. And I know the people who will find that funny. All right. Like I said, don't let me get too lost in this one. It is really fun. But you can see... Oh, let's carve that part out. That was fun. Um, you can see that this painting is coming together much, much more nicely. It's got composition now. Let me tilt that up so we can see it. It's got composition and it's got potential, right? Whereas before it was just a whole pile of colors. It was a background and people might have given me suggestions like I've seen some of you do, which is just like, oh, maybe add pan pastel, maybe add this, maybe add that. The problem wasn't my finishing, the problem was the composition. There wasn't one. So now I'm getting and developing a composition on this piece, right? So this piece to me now is worthy of continuing to work on it and to continue to evolve it as a piece. So I'm going to put that one aside now and I'm going to pull this other one out. So this other one I started with a different approach. So no chalk paint on this one. Um, this one, however, I can, I, I like this bottom. It's, it's such a weird, it's a weird piece of collage that I put in there because it's like very brown, very earthy, very, and normally I would probably do something more interesting than that, but I'm just wondering how an image transfer might look on this one instead. So let me look in my bin of things here. Normally I don't do an image transfer this early in a painting 
but I just feel like this one might be able to handle it without having too much else that I have to do to it. So the interesting thing, or one of the interesting things I could point out is that the paper that's underneath, which is now fully um, glued in and dried in, could still be removed if I wanted to. So how would I do that? Um, all I would do is, because remember my wax underneath was waterproofed. So all I would actually do is, is take the painting and then spray it with a lot of, uh, like try and um, scrape off some of this top layer. And then I would add a bit of water and let it kind of soak in and then I would just pull it back out. So that, that piece in there, that lettuce we were talking about is really just sitting there. It's not actually, it's not actually really fused in permanently. It's just kind of sitting inside. So I'm getting a nice smooth surface ready for um, a transfer. I'll see if I have any paper or any images here to transfer. Um, but in the meantime, this piece of collage that I have down here, it, it's great, but it's also, looks like it could be developed just a wee bit further. So let's put in, no, let's do the transfer. So I'll go in here and see what I've got. Here's a fun image that I haven't. Hmm. No, I don't have anything. It's always better to prepare your images, right? So I didn't prepare any images for that. So let's go into, oh, I just had a great idea. So remember what we did with the orange painting yesterday? We did those big circles and I'm wondering if we did something very similar um, we, on top of our collage, if we could create an interesting little um, layered effect. So then anyone who's watching the masks and stencils and participating in that tomorrow, you'll get yet another application using encaustic. So let's try that. Okay, I'm just mixing another bit of um, blue because it had already dried on my palette. Sorry, this camera is so shaky. You guys are going to get vertigo just watching. There we go. So I have my blue mixed up. I always find that when I have brown, a nice pastel color will really help complement that. So I'm going to take my, my sponge and dip it in my blue chalk paint. And go on top of the wax. Oh, too much water in this sponge. I'm going to get rid of that. Water is totally the enemy of wax, right? It completely waterproofs and this is a perfect example of it waterproofing. Okay, so this is a positive, right? And now up here, why don't I create a negative situation? So I am going to mix a blue paint. That you guys can't see, unfortunately, but I'm gonna mix a blue paint in wax so that I can put it up here and then scrape through and scrape back, scrape out circles if I want. But this is showing you the layering. 
Now in this approach, you can see that because I was really open to letting go of the back, I'm not sure anymore that I actually care to bring it to the surface. We'll see what happens, but it doesn't really seem like, like I'm not, I don't even remember what was under there anymore to be perfectly honest. That's how easy it is to let go of some of your old stuff. So when you're looking at them, be objective. Just say, am I willing to let go of this? Because I think that's half the battle sometimes, right? Is just being willing to realize that it had its moment. There, and I'm going to fuse that one up. Get rid of my paper towels again. So this, we have a real old sandwich going on, right? Because I've got all that wax underneath. Then I have uh, a big piece of collaged in paper. And now I have more wax on top of the clear wax that I had put on. Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting background. So what I could do is I could take my chances, see what's underneath here. I could scrape away some of the white. I could scrape away around the um, dots. I could also just remove some of the dots and see what happens from there. So if I scrape through, my wax is not warm enough, so I'm gonna warm that up. If your scraping is difficult, it's just because your wax isn't warm. I'm just waiting for this to get to the right temperature so that I can do a transfer. But let's try and scrape out some of the circles. So I didn't hit the jackpot on this circle because there's nothing under it but something dark. So I'm not sure I care to keep that. So what I might do is leave it or I might fill it with something else. But for now, there it is. Scrape out this one. This one's a bit more interesting. Got some yellow. If I don't scrape down too far, I have like an orange. So that's kind of fun. I don't mind that one. So the other thing I can do is if I don't really like what I've got in there, but I want it to, let's say, coordinate a little bit better. What I can do is I can cut a little piece of tissue and I could pop that in there. Let's see what happens when I take this one. You know what? Because like I had told you before, I'm not actually, I wasn't married to this painting. I don't even know what's under here because there's really nothing that interesting. So the other one was much more interesting when I scraped. This one just has like, I don't know, I, I'm not hitting any jackpots, that's for sure. Well, there, finally we hit something a little more interesting. Not that interesting, but something a little more interesting anyway. So that one, four, let's do five. I'm feeling lucky. Feeling lucky. What do you guys think? Come on. Interesting. This was the worst painting. It deserved to be covered up. Okay. There's nothing interesting going on underneath this one. So those spots. Look, at. I can't stop. I'm like bound and determined to find something great, but there's just nothing there. Okay. Give it up. Give it up, Louisa. Give it up. Um, circles. So we can also use other tools to cut into this still, right? So this is when you get into more like details and fussy stuff. But I have this little round circular thing that I can also add some interest to. I can also dip it in a little bit of wax and press it in. And then it'll give me something a little bit different. Okay. 
There, so those are a little bit better. Um, okay, so let's let's do, transfer should be okay on there. So I have these images, I'm gonna cut one out. That's about the right size. And for you guys who are, are just watching this for the first time and, and not familiar at all with encaustic or with transfers and all that stuff, transfers are, um, just a way of, of being able to add in your image without having to collage it in. So I could totally just collage this in and maybe make it easier on everybody to watch. Yeah, actually that's gonna be easier for everyone to watch. Um, maybe when we get into transfers, we can do them in mixed media as well because transfers are something that um, across any board, they just, they work really, well as a as an element of um of animating our images so remember when i talked to you before about when we did that project on friday when we don't have when we have an abstract painting and we're trying to make it come to life all we have to do is animate it with an object or with a tree or with a person or with something that tells the story of what that painting actually is. So yeah, collage was definitely the right answer in this case. So I put a little bit of glue behind and I put a little bit of glue under. So you guys, I'm gonna lift this so that you can see it. So do you see now that this painting has a composition? So it's not anywhere near um, done, but like the background on this one is not contributing at all to this painting and no matter how much scraping and stuff I was doing eh, it's really not doing anything so I'll continue to work on this one ignoring the background so I said goodbye to it it's done it's over and and I'm moving on whereas this one the background is completely contributing right to the um, overall appearance of this picture so I'm excited to keep working with this one toning it down, bringing it out, playing with the layers on this one, because now both of these images have composition, whereas when we started, neither of them had a composition. So my best advice to, would be, is that remember, remember your, um, I'm gonna pull this off of the tripod and turn it around. My best advice would be to First of all, any old paintings that you've got, if they're not working, like I said, just identify first of all what it is that's not um, not working in it, okay? So what was working, not working in these paintings was that I had zero composition. I had lots of interesting areas, but it did not make for an interesting composition at all. Um, and it certainly wasn't speaking for me. It wasn't telling the world who I am. It wasn't doing anything for me. So I was okay to let them go. And sometimes in your paintings, you may just want to be, you, you, you may find yourself being completely fearless when you just agree that whatever has to go, has to go. And so I showed two different approaches on how to approach that over top of wax. You just have to remember stability, right? So when you put wax on top of a painting, you have essentially waterproofed it, okay? So now it's waterproof. So anytime you're gonna use anything now, pay attention to this. Now, if you're gonna use anything that is water soluble, you've, got, you've come up against a situation where You've just waterproofed something and now you want to use water soluble things on top. So your walnut inks, all that stuff, nothing is penetrating that wax because you have waterproofed it. That's why you can only use things like oil paints and oil pastels and oil bars and uh, the oil sticks, more encaustic. That's why we can only use and continue to work in those areas. So think about using a more opaque to just cover it and then scrape back and reveal some of that great stuff underneath before scraping and getting rid of those layers because those layers may actually be very beneficial to you in the long run. Um, 
on on this one for sure where I covered it in the chalk paint I'm still able to scratch back and still able to sandwich it in between but it doesn't mean that it has fused at all or bonded to my wax so just remember the stability of everything that you're doing post waterproofing okay so the same principles basically apply anyway in mixed media which is why I didn't mind doing it today you just have to be a little more cautious about the stability and how much moisture content you're putting into something um, like for instance the walnut ink which is water soluble will not work okay it won't work because it's going to um, create sorry my ears a bit blocked it's um, going to create an interesting um, look maybe like depending on what you're collaging on there but unless it's fully dry and just holding that that paper in between it's not a very stable layer so you just want to make sure that your layers are stable um, in order for you to keep working so chalk base start more opaque wax start and collage so in this collage if you look I can scrape through and there's probably some way more interesting stuff going on up here now. We could carve some trees in here. That may be more fun if she's in a forest of polka dots. Giving a little curtsy. So that is definitely more interesting than you can see what's behind these dots right so I'm really happy I was willing to let this painting go and I definitely chose the right one because the one that's really popping here has this great stuff happening in the background and whereas look at this these areas are just fantastic this is the stuff you can't make up right like this is the stuff that you can't plan this is the stuff that just happens and it becomes a painting it becomes an expression of of who you are as your as it's creating this one on the other hand it was it was headed in the right direction right from the beginning in the wrong direction sorry right from the beginning so attempting to fix it would have been somewhat futile because it really didn't have any composition and now I'm seeing that completely in the scraping that's happening and I'm going to just continue maybe to evolve this by carving in the trees and things like that because they are way more fun than anything that's happening on the bottom. And I'm not at all attached to anything that is on the bottom. I'm willing to let that go too. If I scrape too hard, I'm scraping that brown paper off and that's not as cool. So I'm going to be a bit more gentle with it. I also can't really hold my phone and do this without potentially ruining her. So I'm just going to leave around her a little more until afterwards. But I hope, Margot, that gave you um, a bit of direction. And to anyone who was wondering how to um, maybe address a, an encaustic painting in a different manner. And I would tell you that the, my best advice, like I said, over both of them, and over also the ones that I've been been doing with with you guys live, like all the or all the mixed media ones, is that when you pull out your old paintings, and some of you have been posting, and I'm so 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 happy that you have been posting, because showing all the stuff that we're, you know, been buried in the back of our closet that we're ashamed of and everything else, or we're just don't want to look at it because we don't know how to approach it. Pull out your composition sheet because I bet you nine times out of ten it's in the composition your composition is too busy your composition is too um, like it's floating your composition is non-existent as it was in my paintings um, 
And then you can start to ask yourself other questions. But initially, just look at the composition because I, I am going to, like I said, I would bet that a lot of your, the issues in your paintings lie in the fact that our compositions are, are generally um, either too busy or too um, scattered or like I said in mine, absolutely non-existent. So how are we doing for time here? Oh, it's past. I'm sorry. So you know what? Um, tomorrow I'll pop on here at noon and at noon I'll just be telling people how to make it make their way over to the um, the open studio workshop class um, which is on a separate page that you've been uh, invited to if you haven't been don't worry I'll keep checking on you send me a message if you just bought it today um, then please uh, just be patient I will promise I'll get that to you um, as soon as I get home Anyway, on that page is all the ways you can prep for the project, um, meaning you can print the PDF, you can get your paints, you can get your supplies out, you can get all that stuff. I'll open the waiting room up at 1245 to give everybody time to log in, but then at one o'clock we're gonna start. And um, how do you buy it? I put the link um, in our page many, many times, so just keep looking for it there. It's um, on my website, it's christinalovisa.com and under the, the um, I think it's under workshops, it'll say take a workshop or take a class or something like that and it's right in there. So um, follow the links. Uh, I've been told that it's fairly easy. This is brand new for me, this whole website. I haven't been doing it, but um, it should work out for you. So if you have any issues, just let me know and um, we'll resolve to fix those up but in the meantime um yeah have any questions or anything pop them over to me and the do we cut the birds for tomorrow's project no we're dealing with yeah so don't worry about that sophie just print it if you have it if you want to use those birds and we're doing everything real time tomorrow so that's the difference is i'm not demoing i'm demonstrating and giving you guys time to do it Okay, so I feel that this platform will be better for everybody to actually have those instructions sink in. So if you have that image ready, great. If you don't, there'll even be time to go and print it. Okay, so um, thank you all for watching and I hope you found it informative if you were working with encaustic and needed to know how to um, further evolve your paintings. Like I said, nine times out of 10, all your issues within your abandoned paintings lie in the composition. Uh, I mean, there's a million other reasons, but I would say nine times out of 10, it's composition. Composition is either non-existent, too busy, too much, too whatever, but composition is really everything. So, um, Tessa, I think I sent you the invitation. So you guys, what you're not looking for a link you're looking for an invitation to a private group within Facebook, okay? So it's it's a private link and you have to be invited into it. So I, it, you're, you're not looking for a link. The link will come to you guys after, but you won't be able to participate live using a link. You have to be in that group in order to participate. The link will come after we're done. So, and that way you can download it once you're uh, later on if you wanna watch it. Um, you want to make sure that you accept my invitation into the private group. Okay, so I will keep um, making sure that you guys are invited. I'll, I'll, uh, I keep comparing the, um, the who signed up to the invitation. So make sure you all accept my invitation. That's where your, your live feed is going to be tomorrow. It's in that private group and then the link will come after. So make sure that you aren't waiting for a link because it'll come too late for you to participate live. All right, so with that being said, if I continue to finish these or involve them, I will definitely post pictures, um, but I will take a before, um, I took before pictures so I can post before here and then once they're completely done. So, but here, like I said, that's two approaches, um, encaustic for evolving your paintings. Okay, thanks guys for watching and um, 
I'm glad you learned lots. We'll see you tomorrow. I am so excited for the new, this new platform. I have my new tripod all ready to go and yeah, this should be great. Um, lots, lots, lots to accomplish, lots to learn, but so much fun to be had. Okay, bye everyone.